Are you an introvert or an extrovert, or you may be an ambivert? Welcome back to After Hour Happy Hour. We are your chaotic but cathartic co-host. I'm Vicky. I'm Jamila. I'm Sharon. So today we're going to touch a little on introvert versus extrovert, and that's Sharon's mom over there if you see the video. Looking real good. What's up? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Sharon, do you want to explain what each of those are? Yeah, so I'm just going to read a little bit of a blurb that I found comparing introvert versus extrovert on the Myers-Briggs website. So when considering people who are introverts versus extroverts, it's natural to think more on the social aspect of these traits. However, there's more and I wanted to highlight a couple. When it comes to introverts, they tend to be more introspective and they focus a lot on their alone time and they need time alone to regather their energy and restore their calm versus extroverts. They feed off the responses of the people and events around them. So for them, boredom comes really easily and they enjoy aspects of being the center of attention. And their outgoing energy can be vital to a social gathering and their liveliness can be contagious. Earlier, we also dropped the term ambervert, which is something that I did not know existed and I feel like Jam and Sharon didn't either. But basically, it's the in-between of the two and it's you adapt to whichever side depending on the situation. So to kick this off, what are you? Human. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Originally, I thought well, I, I consider myself an introvert, but after I realized that ambivert is a thing, I would say I'm more an ambivert than I am an introvert. Exact same answer as Vicky's. I'm definitely an extrovert. Even just based on what Sharon said earlier, that's very me. So extrovert. But why do you think you are what you are? Well, based on what Sharon said earlier, I think those characteristics are pretty fitting to me. I definitely get bored pretty easily. I also am the person who really adapts to people's energy. So in a really big group setting, I already have my energy. But if in a group people are super high energy as well, that gets me going even more. And I feel like for the most part in a group setting, maybe with people that I'm not too familiar with, I always do try to make the small talk or have these, you know, conversations to get to know each other. So that's why I would consider myself an extrovert. Okay, question for Jam then. So let's say you have like a big networking event on like a Saturday and, you know, you thrive off of it because you're an extrovert. The next day, how do you feel? I mean, I would think I would get tired too. But if I had an other event, let's just have my hangout friends or at a party, I'll still be fine. Like I'll just still be my extrovert self. That's interesting. Yeah, because I am, I say I'm an ambivert because let's say like networking on a Saturday, I would thrive off of it. Like just being around that energy where I know I need to like talk a lot, where I need to socialize a lot. I can do it hands down, no issue. But then the Sunday, the day after, I would need to be by myself. I can't talk to anybody. If you try to engage me in a conversation, I probably would sound like I don't like you and I can't really carry the conversation anymore because I exhausted myself the day before doing so. I think for me, maybe the next day, if I wasn't doing anything, yeah, my energy would be lower. Or if I'm seeing people or talking to people that I'm not necessarily engaged in a conversation with, then yeah, my energy would be lower. But let's just say I was seeing you guys or we're all going out to have fun. I think my energy would still be there. So I think my thing is I would cancel or I wouldn't even make a plan after a big day, you know, to hang out with people just because I know I wouldn't be able to handle it. Like I would hate going out. Yeah, I think three biggest factors when it comes to why I consider myself an introvert is because of energy levels, how I recharge and my personal space. So there is a max capacity to my energy levels. And once I have tapped out on that, I need to recharge. And I am not somebody who needs to be with someone else all the time. You know how there's people in friend groups where they're always like, what are you doing? Let's do this together. Even if it's just sitting there and not doing anything. Yeah, no, I like my alone time. In fact, I love my alone time, so Mm -hmm. that's why I think I'm an introvert. 
I don't think I am an extreme extrovert where I need to be with someone all the time. But compared to both of you, I definitely enjoy company more than alone time. So you know how, Jam, you haven't left the house in nine months, basically. Do you feel like you're more introverted now because you kind of had to establish being an introvert and being by yourself in solitude and just loneliness? <laughs> so I think starting in January of 2020 actually was when I became a little bit more introverted. I don't know if you know this, you know, I was at home a lot more. I didn't go out as much, especially towards, you know, February, March. So I feel like that prepared me for quarantine. And I would say, yes, I became more introverted in the sense that obviously I don't have people to feed off energy as much or I'm not going out. But I think when we do talk or get together, my energy is still there. Or even when I'm just like hanging out with my parents, my energy is there. So I don't think I became more introverted willingly it's just the environment doesn't allow me to fully express my extrovertedness does that make sense yeah but that's interesting because I feel like on the spectrum of being an extrovert you're on the lower end of it because I've met people who cannot stand doing what you did for nine months they will literally go insane and have to leave and be with people because they get depressed not being around people and it's extreme for them I guess since I asked Jam if she's on the other side do you feel like you've ever been the opposite of what you think you are now like have I ever thought that I was an introvert no (laughs) for all my life I always thought I was an extrovert. Like, I took the Myers Briggs in high school, and I've been the same personality ESFP since I've taken it. And my extrovertness actually just has increased throughout the years. I think I used to be maybe like 60, 70 percent, but now I'm at like an 80. I think I was always an introvert. Just I would consider myself an extroverted introvert, which is why I would be an ambiv and what ambivert ambivert. Amphibian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I was gonna say ambivalent, <laughs> but I think it just depends when my extroverted comes out. So, for example, my second year summer when I lived in the Bay with Jam, I was an extrovert to the max, the max I've ever been, and it was the first time I took the Myers Briggs test and I got an ENFJ. And then after that summer, I switched to an INFJ. But basically, that summer. I don't know what I was eating or what was going on, but Jam and I, you know, would go to our internship 9 to 5, then we would go to the gym after, then we would just hang out and do stupid stuff the rest of the night, repeat, and then every weekend we had something, whether it was events or just going around town and doing all these things, and I initiated a lot of them, and I met a lot of new people that summer, and I was like, new people? Sure, I'm down to meet you. Now, if it's past 12 a.m., all I think about is sleep. And if you're introducing me to a new person, all I think is, what are we going to talk about? Am I going to make a good impression? So yeah, I definitely think I kind of switched. Yeah, I'm like Sharon. Uh, Well, actually, I at one point really thought I was an extrovert. And I thought I was always going to be an extrovert, which was first and second year of college. But I think it was very much pushing myself to meet more people because that's the prime time to meet people. I was so extroverted first and second year. I went out all the time. I met so many people. I think everyone that I've known till this day besides apartment mates maybe are people that I've met first and second year. I don't think I've really met that many new people at the later end of college. I don't know what I was eating either because I sincerely enjoyed talking to people and I thrived off of it and I was like, I love networking. I love meeting new people. Everyone's my best friend and I am high energy all the time. Yeah, no, that's not me. I hate people now. But honestly, I I enjoyed it so much those first two years because I really wanted that college experience that I kind of tricked myself into believing that I was an extrovert, which I guess now that I think about it, it's a good thing because I met so many people, but never again. I think I like crashed so hard after second year, like mid second year, I was done. Like I didn't want to meet people. I was by myself in my room all the time. And like, I just needed alone time. Okay, then follow up question. Do you ever wish you were on the other side of the spectrum? I feel like Jam's answer would be no, but I feel like Vicky and I might. Yeah, see, (laughs) 
Honestly, I wish I was more introverted. What? Describe what you mean by you want to be more introverted. Like in what areas? Like being comfortable, always being by myself and not feeling... I think the biggest part is not feeling FOMO. So I think when you guys go out or when you guys ask me to go out or even other people who do hangouts and stuff in a big setting or with people that I kind of half know and don't really know, a part of me is like, I should go and meet more people. I should go and network or like I should go and do this and that and, you know, expand my circle. I wish I was more comfortable with the idea of you don't need quantity of people. You just need quality of people. And so the FOMO and the need to network professional side of me is always telling myself I should do all these things, but then I end up being in a situation that I'm not happy in. And so if I was more comfortable with being introverted and the idea of who needs a bigger circle, who needs more friends, and who needs all these connections, then I'd be a lot more satisfied, I guess. I think I definitely wish sometimes I was a little bit more on the extroverted side. I think when I think in social situations, I'm aware that a lot of people can naturally gravitate towards more of the extroverted people. So sometimes I almost fake it to Mm. match that setting, I think. But I know I am capable of being extroverted. I genuinely enjoy talking to people and stuff, but just sometimes... I think the introverted side of me takes over where I just overthink about my surroundings and that's not organic in a situation. And also, I just wish I was able to hang, honestly, because sometimes I just really get tired or I just need to recharge and extroverted people just bounce off the walls and I wish I was a part of that, but sometimes, nope. So for me, I wish I was actually more extroverted. I think, you know, within us or within my really more like close friends group, I'm definitely more the extroverted one. But I think in a bigger group setting, I'm not as extroverted as I seem compared to a lot of people. And I wish I could have more of that. It's when you're in a group of people that you may not be as familiar with, huh? Yeah, I do try to get to know the other people, but I don't think my natural personality of extrovertedness like comes out as much. So I do wish it could be more like that across like all settings, not just a specific setting with, like with close friends or something. I feel like I disagree with that. You make a great first impression automatically right off the bat. I would want to meet Jam at any event because you would make me feel comfortable, even if we were strangers. Like, I literally met you randomly at Sephora, and we decided to be roommates, so. (laughs) I think I said that because I've met someone, or I've known two people who are more extroverted than me, that I admire their skills in being that extroverted, so that's why. I was going to say, the thing is, let's say I was... Well, I'll take Jam, for example, because she's extroverted, right? Let's say I'm with Jam, and she introduces me to, like, five of her friends that I don't know. I could thrive off that environment because I am comfortable, and I want to get to know these people. But let's say I'm with somebody who I'm not that close to, and they introduce me to five of their friends. I will, Mm. like, I will do my best to be that extroverted person, and I will make the effort. But afterwards, I will be tired, exhausted, for sure. So... I feel like Jam is really good at that where let's say I bring her into friends that she's not familiar with, which I've done what that one summer when we went out together. Yeah. And she just thrives off of it. And I, I envy that if anything is like how do you meet so many people that you don't know yet you're so comfortable I don't know if it's like you just putting up a front or you just automatically do feel comfortable, but it's just like, wow, I envy that so much for you to be in an environment that you're not comfortable in and to be comfortable in it. I think we, I don't even know if it's an introverted thing, but I think we just overthink. Me and Vicky have talked Mm. about this before where let's say we're hanging out with someone we don't know that much, 
prior to that hangout we will be like okay who's gonna pay for the check should i and then oh, offer to yep. split it or sh- what kind of conversation should i drive things like that where we psychoanalyze everything and i think that's yeah. what hurts us versus jams just like goes into the conversation oh i have a question i'll ask it oh she answered then i'll follow up with another question which is how it should be you know i think we just overthink it all yeah i was, I was gonna say something similar you know when that summer when i met like Basically, all your friends, like your home friends, Vicky. I mean, one, we were in a drinking situation. So I think that's why it was like a lot yeah. easier. But I think in a social situation, I usually just talk. Yeah, I do think about, oh, what to say and stuff. But I just kind of talk. And if they say something, I'll follow up with it. And just go with the flow and not think about it as much. The thing I really like about introvertedness and wanting to be more introverted is you save so much money. So so much money going out and even if you don't go out every night just going to the club for one night if you do it every weekend the uber the drinks the getting into places and the fees and stuff like that as an introvert i did the math if you just want to buy subscriptions for things the most you would spend every month basic plan for every subscription that you could think of 34 dollars. that's it every month that's less than one night of going out. Like, come on now. You save so much money. I do agree because I am the type of person that is always down to go out. Unless I have some assignment due or I physically can't go out, you can pretty much expect me to say yes. <laughs> and yeah, a lot of money is spent that way. <laughs> yeah. But to me, it's like such a good time and I'm so fond of the memories I have. So I think it's worth it. Yeah. I think it's better spending money on experiences than like subscriptions. I do agree with that. How do you guys think that your side best help you versus how does it hurt you? I think being an introvert sucks in this world, especially career wise. The world is built to have extroverts because everything's about connections. To get very far in life, I feel like you need a lot of connections. And so that's something I beat myself up on is not wanting to network more because I just don't like talking to people like that. But that's the part that hurts me the most is like I don't push for more after certain conversations, especially networking. I'll do one session and then after that, I have no idea how to follow up type of thing. And so that hurts me a lot. I guess on the other side, the best side, I save a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else. Oh, I guess self-reflection. I think I'm very self-aware because of how much I self-reflect. Okay, similarly, going off of Vicky's, I think the best side is I resonated with this a lot of what I read in Myers-Briggs, but I can go into any situation, assess what's going on, and read the room, I guess. So I think that's very helpful. I think the worst thing or what hurts me most is usually when it comes to going out and stuff, like people say, Sharon, do you want to do this or that? There's a lot of instances where I say no because that's just the way that my introverted brain works. And I think that hurts me because in most situations, when I do go out, I usually have a great time. And I come back home thinking I had a fun time or it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So I think sometimes I just need to let go of that introverted side and do more because I don't want to miss out on the memories and stuff. So I think that's how it hurts me the most. So for me, I'll start with what hurts me. I think one of the aspects of being an introvert was being really introspective, right? So I think for me being an extrovert, I haven't been the most introspective or as we mentioned in the previous episode, in touch with my emotions. So I think that's the part that's hurt me the most as an extrovert. And another part is that, you know, maybe in conversations because my mind just kind of speaks or I just speak as my mind goes, maybe I could say something wrong or not the right thing in the right situation so that could hurt me um I think the extrovertness also helps me like professionally I think in relation to what Vicky said earlier I'm not as afraid to reach out and network with people I mean I get rejected a lot of times but (laughs) I think I'm not afraid to reach out and make those connections which has benefited me a lot in my interviews or something like that Yeah, I envy that a lot. I think the only reason why I want to be extroverted is for career. 
development. Even in social settings, I don't mind being introverted and being the person that listens. But when it comes to networking, man, the things I would do to be extroverted <laughs> in those situations, like career fairs. Oh my gosh. Imagine me finger gunning a recruiter. <laughs> Thanks. I think when you, you know, finger gun people, it's just part of your personality. I think it's fine. I think being an extrovert is not just about putting yourself out there and trying to talk to all these people. It's also incorporating your personality. Like you can't lose your personality when you're trying to be more extroverted. Would you say that's a misconception about extroverts then, Jam? Oh, I didn't think about that, but maybe. I think in a group setting, maybe when you just first meet an extrovert, even when you first meet me, you might think, oh, is she actually being genuine with these questions? Like, does she actually want to get to know us? Or is she just doing it to, like, lose some of the tension and things? So, yeah, I feel like that could be a misconception about extroverts. But it also depends how you present yourself in the situation, obviously. On that note, is there any misconceptions about introverts? I do have a misconception about introverts because I think it's really common, as Sharon had mentioned in the beginning, that you would think introverts are people who just really keep to themselves. They don't really maybe like talk that much or something. But I think being an introvert is just, you know, like you said, more introspective. So taking like a friend, for example, I thought she was an introvert for the longest time. And then she told me her Myers-Briggs and she was actually an extrovert. And I was really surprised because... For the most part, in like social settings, it seemed like she's the less talkative one and stuff. But once you get to know her, she's actually very like talkative. She's actually very social. So I guess that's an extroverted introvert. No, I think she would be an introverted extrovert. Because I also would have thought she was an introvert. But the thing is, throw her into a group of people maybe she doesn't know that much. Then she won't be the one who hogs all the attention or wants to speak. But put her in a group of people where she's most comfortable with, she will talk your ear off. So, like, I think in that aspect, she can be extremely extroverted. Yeah, so that's, I guess, where my misconception about introverts came in. Yeah. I think my biggest misconception that I get is that people think that introverts are shy, and that's it. I'm not shy. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a lot of people don't realize that the biggest factors of introverts is whether they feed off of people's energies or not. And... I don't want people to think that introverts are boring because they don't do things. It's just sometimes they really, really need their space and they need to charge, recharge. See, I think the biggest way we can distinguish it is, you know how I could go out like four days in a row, but like Sharon and Vicky, they would maybe, actually not maybe, they would need to recharge after like two days. Oh, one day. But the thing is, it's dependent on the situation. For example, like EDC, I could be there for seven days, for <laughs> sure, you know? We've got a race slave over here. Seven. No, no, no. I think it's just dependent on where and what. Yeah. I think a lot of it is, like, comfortableness. For example, if you put me in people I don't know for even 30 minutes, I would want to get out of there so quick. But if I were to live with you guys for a month and, you know, be around you guys, I have no issues seeing you guys every single day, every hour of every day, you know, because I'm comfortable with you guys. And I think if you return the gesture to an introvert and you accept that, okay, they don't want to talk and you give them space and stuff like that, let them feel comfortable, they will be extrovert around you. As Sharon would say, they would have their crackhead energy moments around you if you give them the room to be whatever they are. Okay, I have a question that we don't have to include, but I guess, Jam, between me and Vicky, who's more extroverted? You know, it's really interesting because I was thinking this when you guys were answering, but I would say Vicky. Really? Yeah, because when Sharon mentioned the summer that she was the most extroverted, I honestly didn't even think she was, like, that extroverted. (laughs) 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 But... In comparison to, you know, maybe more so how is she now? Yes, she is more extroverted. But when I think about Vicky, of all the times that we've gone out or we hung out, you've always gone out with me and you had your energy. I never felt like you were dead or anything. Damn, I was like 120% convinced Jen was going to say me. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) But when she explains it like that, I can see it. 
Yeah, but I think in different situations, Vicky always talks about how when in a group setting with people she doesn't know that well, she's extremely introverted, and I can see that. So in that aspect, in our first year, Amy, Vicky, and I, we went out to VSA, like a student org. And I think Vicky thrived the most off the three of us in terms of meeting people and talking to people because she's she ended up being the one who stayed in the org. I think, Vicky, you undermine your ability to talk in a social setting then. Yeah. I think you just really focus on the times you've been introverted, mm-hmm. that you don't think about the times that you've been extroverted. Or maybe you don't think about those times because I guess compared to Sharon and I, maybe like we've gone out more or we've done more stuff. So you feel like you're more introverted, but I don't think so. Yeah, because Vicky's always down and I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like, there's a much higher chance for Vicky to say yes and Sharon. Like, Sharon, I will have to, like, do some convincing. Yeah, and Vicky stays <laughs> up to, like, 4 or 5 a.m. while I go to sleep at, like, 11 p.m. So, Vicky, I'm an extrovert, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like now that I think about it, I do thrive off other people's energy a lot, which I guess is why when I'm around jams going out or when I'm with Sharon, being super high energy bounces off to me and so I can get really comfortable and talk a lot even if there's like one or two people that I'm not comfortable with but like for people who I sincerely don't like I will be very very introverted and I don't even make the effort to be extroverted you learn something new every day (laughs) what did you learn today (laughs) that you're you're more introverted introverted than I thought (laughs) I don't think you're more introvert than you thought, but Vicky is more extrovert than she thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was our a little peek into our introvert and extrovert lives. Let us know if you're an introvert or an extrovert and how you stand between these two. Also, let us know if you thought we were introverted or extroverted. Mm. Until next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.